Hey guys, welcome to the elevator game with Cat Girl. So, as you may have guessed, this is the first video of 2021. Hopefully you guys had a good New Year's Eve and are having a good New Year's Day. But, I have no idea. This game was from Ichio. It says it was a demo. I don't know how long. I think they said the demo was 20 minutes, but I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, this game is more of a narrative story, so there won't be a ton, a ton of action. So if that's not something you like, I apologize. <laughs> it looked interesting. So, let's go. It's a cold winter night. Snow started to fall a couple hours ago, so the cityscape is littered with a layer of white fluff. It crunches under our feet as we walk down the street. Ta-da! We're here! Oh boy. I like It reminds me of a comic book magazine type thing. I don't know, I kind of like it so far. I'm simple. <laughs> I look up to inspect the tall building before us. It's past midnight, so, it ha so it's to be expected that most people living here should be asleep by now. Naturally, that also explains why barely any of the windows show illumination coming from the inside. Considering what we're here for, it only adds to the creepiness of the situation. I've never been a fan of dark places. That didn't change even when I got my feline features. You'd think that being able to see so much more clearly in the dark would make darkness less scary, wouldn't you? Trouble is, I hear so many more little sounds that I couldn't make out before, too. And since I'm not sure what all of them are, the dark's every bit as creepy as it was before. Maybe even more so. Oh boy. Hello. <laughs> so we are finally a response. I thought you were starting to give me the silent treatment again. It's a fault of mine and one I'm not too proud of. I tend to get lost in my own head sometimes. Well, quite often, really. Thankfully, Kroon is finally used to it by now. I swear, of all the buildings in the city, you just had to choose one which seems super creepy. This has to be the sole residential building in the whole office district. So, I'm a cat. <laughs> Hence cat girl. So, I guess I'm shy and that's Kroon. I'm sorry if I'm messing up names for people that actually know these characters. Oh, but you could, but you know it couldn't have been just any building. This one is perfect. And by perfect, you mean meeting the conditions and being less than 10 miles away from our homes. Or are you enjoying our walk in the snow together so much that you'd like to prowl around aimlessly for another hour? It took us an hour to get here. The hell? Because I don't know about you, but I'm really starting to feel the cold. Hmm. Was that your plan? For me to need you to warm me up afterwards? You could have said something. I just stare at her, not really sure what to say. There's no winning with her when she gets all sly like this. As much as I hate to admit it, it's one of the things I actually like about her. Why did I sign up for this again? Because you love me? <laughs> yes, thank you for reminding me of that questionable fact. Say, do you get the feeling like someone is manipulating someone else for their advantage over you? <laughs> Isn't that a rude relationship? <laughs> no, just me? Oh, come on, don't be like that. You know I'm happy you decided to come with me. I'll make it up to you, I promise. I stare at her for a moment longer before I sigh. I really can't argue with her, not when she's looking at me like that. I had a silent crush on this girl for the longest time and never expected to one day find out that the attraction was mutual. The fact that we managed to actually get together still feels so unreal sometimes. If it weren't for the fact that the change affected her too, it would have never come to this. As much as I disliked it in the beginning, it made me feel like an outcast among my former peers after all. Our shared experience allowed me to be there for her when she needed it most. It's a memory I am always going to cherish, of that I am sure. I breathe warmly in my pockets, or ha! <laughs> I can read. I breathe warmly on my hands, rub them together, and then jam them deep in my pockets. It's not much, but hopefully it will keep some feelings in my fingertips. It's enough to let me focus on things in the here and now, at least rather than just how cold it is. I said it before and I'll say it again. You get provoked way too easily. Hmm? You're doing all of this because of the bet with Morgan, aren't you? Oh, sure, that's one of the reasons. That's not the only one. I'm doing it because it's fun. Fun? Grin, you have seen the forums. Not a single person out there ever said it was a good idea. 
Ah, oh, yes. All those fairy tale stories. Quite tragic, really. Come on, you're not about to tell me you honestly believe those. I really like the uh, art style in this so far. So you mean that you don't? <laughs> Seriously, girl, we live in the real world. Spooky, scary skeletons don't just pop out of nowhere because someone decided to be an idiot and press some button a certain way. I can't believe you of all people are still saying that strange, unexplained things don't happen. I mean, did you look in the mirror this morning? You did look in the mirror this morning, right? Yeah, those aren't just headbands. <laughs> this is this, and that is that. So you don't believe this will actually work. Remind me why we're here again. We are here to prove a point, namely that Morgan can suck it. <sighs> I honestly can't believe I let you drag me into this. Chill, we suffer the cold for a while longer, nothing happens, and then Morgan owes me 50 bucks. 50 bucks that will treat us to a nice dinner together. Hmm, I do like food. <laughs> I suppose a dinner with you is a pretty good incentive. See, I knew you'd come around. That being said, wish me luck and all that jazz. I'll be right back. Grin? What? I'm the one who should be getting cold feet here, not you. Just... You remember all the rules, right? Stay safe, okay? Shall I be realistic about this? So all of you are going to do. Bite me. You could always get stuck. That's a realistic possibility, if anything. I'm sure you'll figure it out if I do. Now, to be, be sure to stay away from the building since we're breaking those majestic rules otherwise. Right. See you in a bit. I see Karina as she approaches the building's entrance, presses one of the button, the intercom buttons, and moments later pushes the door open. How does she convince people to trust her so quickly to let her into a building like that? She goes through my sight before I know it, a faint click as the door closes behind her. There's a feeling of unease pulling in my stomach, all of this being a bad idea, probably the worst we've had yet. Just screams in my head. I'm so going to give Morgan a piece of my own mind once all of this is over. It's not like I can really do much about it, however. If I were to go in after my girlfriend, saying I've suddenly changed my mind, it would undoubtedly make her angry. How we snuck out our houses through the windows without our parents knowing just to go through with all of this. If I had a problem with this whole crazy idea, I should have said something way earlier. It's too late now. Okay. Tuesday, December 10th. I wrap my fingers on my phone and pull it from my pocket. As I do show, as I do so, I see the screen shows 13 a.m. It took us around an hour to walk here, and while I dreaded us even being here in the first place, I'm also not looking forward to walking all the way back, especially when it's bound to get colder as the night goes on. I don't, I'm not about to sneak out of my house in the cold. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until summer. <laughs> don't sneak out of your house, kids. Perhaps we can use those 50 bucks to get a ride home instead of a meal. Ooh, not a bad decision. Yeah, if things only work that way. Don't argue with my logic. Alright, so we're waiting for her to basically play the elevator game. With another sigh, I turn away and start to walk towards a small park located in the middle of this godforsaken district. I don't know why part of it is a playground. There can't be many kids here in the day, can there? But it is, and there's a slide as well as a pair of swings. I'll most likely freeze my ass off if I sit on one. Though... That would let me lift my feet off the ground for a bit. The cold, snowy ground. I kind of... so weird, but I kind of want a swing set in my backyard. <laughs> I decide to sit down on the nearest one. And just like that, the uneasy feeling of having entered a liminal space hits me, making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Parks are creepy at night. It's like, that's where all the bad things happen. One's mine usually associates playgrounds with children, laughter, movement, and life in general. It's why they're designed for, after all. So when you get into experience the total opposite of that, when you find yourself sitting in an empty, childless playground in the middle of the night, it doesn't feel right. Your mind associates it with something being off, something being wrong. Why are you here in a place you shouldn't be? Um, because your girlfriend dragged you here, I guess? <laughs> like, that's just kind of how life works. Ooh, movement. What's that? Absent-mindedly, my gaze wanders. Something at the other side of the street catches my attention. It's a vending machine. 
I happen to have a bit of change with me, and the idea of something getting something hot to drink is suddenly a very alluring temptation. It would undoubtedly make the waiting out, out in this cold less unpleasant. Please say it's a machine that has hot drinks as well as cold ones. 14. Okay. With my mind made up, I get back to my feet, checking the time more out of habit than actual curiosity again. 15 a.m. Only a minute's passed since from disappeared into the building, and I'm both surprised, and not really. The feeling of time passing slower than usual is normal when you obsessively wait for something, even more so when said waiting is physically uncomfortable. You know when time passes the slowest? When you're watching the time when you're trying to get out of school or work. <laughs> I make my way towards the vending machine without a second thought. To my relief, its glowing buttons do indeed hold the promise of a hot drink. I decide to get... I get to make a decision? Um, I like hot chocolate more than I do coffee. I'm gonna do this. I usually... I'm usually more of a coffee person. Well, you know, whatever. But I'm in the mood for something sweet. My mind will almost likely appreciate the sugar rush right now. Yeah, definitely. It definitely doesn't have to do anything with the fact that this is Kern's favorite drink. That is a creepy bottle for some reason. Yeah, it's about time I acknowledge the fact that I've started to consume more sweet stuff because of her. Even though she says I'm sweet enough as I am. Aww, you two are cute. It's only when there's a clunk of coins of change in this chain slot that I realize the cocoa is a bit cheaper than the coffee, meaning that I'll be able to get a can for Curry when she comes out too. That's a nice surprise. Yeah, after she gets the shit scared out of her. As I work on opening the ball, I realize how warm and heavenly it feels in my hands. I wrap my hands around it, enjoying a few moments of bliss as the heat warms my fingers. I take a small sip, instantly happy with the taste. Being able to drink anything warm feels like a godsend right now. Satisfied, at least momentarily, I make my way back to the playground, intending to sit back on the spot I took up before. Yeah, I don't know about all this. I reach the swing and settle back down. As I glance up again at the building, Kern slipped into a minute ago. Oh. All the lights are out. My blood suddenly runs cold. A sense of sudden panic swarms my mind as I try to make sense of what I am seeing. A building that's dead to the world. All pitch black, with none of its light shining through the windows anymore. All the residents have gone to sleep in the meantime? That's close to impossible, and I know it. Power outage, maybe? I quickly turn around and look at the other buildings around me. All of them seem the same as when we arrived, with the bright window still present here and there. So surely that couldn't be it. If the power's cut off, it would affect the whole street, wouldn't it? Or even several streets. Almost spilling my drink, I hastily reach for my phone in my pocket. Huh? Uh Close your eyes. I blink, then close my eyes shut for a moment, certain that something's wrong with my eyesight. The time. Couldn't have just gone backwards. Oh, okay. A small sense of relief floods me as I quickly open my eyes again. It must have been a trick of the light before. Or perhaps there was a glitch with my phone's display. Perhaps there's something wrong with me. Well, the lights are back on. Time's passed, but she's still not out. Remember what made me reach for my phone in the first place? I raised my head to look at the building before me once more, only to see it in its previous state. The lights are back on as if they were never gone to begin with. The unease in my stomach stays, though. I know what I saw. I'm pretty sure I couldn't have just imagined it. It's been five minutes since Grin went into the building. Is that enough to ride through a bunch of floors? Would she be mad if I called her too soon? Dwelling on it suddenly feels stupid. No, I'd call her. We're having issues. Mayday. I open up the call app on my phone, and there's her name at the top of the history. She called me just a couple hours ago to confirm our plans for tonight. Admittedly, her name is also there for the call before that, and the one before that. And okay, I chatter a lot. So one more call can't hurt, right? I hit the redial button. I should have expected the call wouldn't connect. If she's still inside the elevator, there probably isn't any reception in there, is there? So what options does that leave me with? Going in after her? Waiting for another five minutes? I'm not waiting in the cold for five more minutes. I would want to go inside. Let's go inside. It's cold. I stare at the building before me intently, afraid to avert my eyes anymore. It's like I'm hopeful my gaze, my constant observation, alone will make the light stay. I'm scared of the situation repeating itself. 
Sometime later, I realized that I've spent so long just holding my can and fretting about Corinne that my drink has gone from a nice hot drink to, well, undrinkable. Some drinks are not meant to be just kinda warm, and this is one of them. At least it keeps my hands from freezing, I guess. <sighs> yeah, but... Ten minutes? Ten minutes? I feel only more cold and helpless. Why can't Kerm just come out of the building now as if nothing has happened and laugh at me for worrying too much? Because uh, something bad happened. Like, that's gonna be... That's why we're here, right? I call her again for good measure. Surprisingly, the call does go through this time. Someone laughing or crying? I'm... No. Hello? It's like a mix of call, like someone crying and laughing. Or panicked. I'm not prepared for what I hear. A woman laughing at the other end. There's something about it that disturbs me to the very core. It's definitely not Corinne's voice. Or is it? You should know your girlfriend's voice. <laughs> All of a sudden, the realization hits me. Morgan, the bet, everything. Now this. None of it could possibly be real. All this has to be a prank arranged by my classmates. And whether Corinne, Corinne's in on it, it mm, I don't think she'd be in on it. She wouldn't do this to me, would she? I don't think so. The image of her wickedly smiling, amused, face persistently pops up in my mind again. Confusion turns to anger. Before I know it, I'm on my feet, already marching to the building, determination boiling inside of me. Alright, here we go. I wouldn't have waited like 10 minutes, but I'm lazy. <laughs> There's an obstacle before I can get in, though, and I obviously don't have a key to the entrance door. What kind of excuse would be plausible at this sort of hour? None. None whatsoever. Just say you're lost. <laughs> I stab at the button that I think Kerm pressed and then almost immediately regret it. What if I press the wrong button? Run. Ding dong ditch. What if I press the right one? It sounds stupid when the other person asks who's there. What if... To my surprise, there's a click from the intercom, and then a buzz as I'm let in without a single word being spoken. Huh. So Kern doesn't have to sweet-talk anyone. I try not to dwell on the unexpected invitation as I shrug it all off on luck. Hmm. Hmm. No. Ooh. As soon as the door's closed behind me, it occurs to me just how dark the inside of the building is. I thought it was light. I know it's the middle of the night, but I'm not sure whether such a complete lack of light is normal. People live here, after all. There should be some sign of life. Buildings usually have at least a few lights on inside, don't they? It's unsettling, although it doesn't make me as nervous as it used to. I know that my vision is going to adjust to the darkness in a moment, letting me navigate the place easily. I'm able to see a lot better in the dark compared to when I was still completely human, but it doesn't work instantly. Oh, there we go. Ooh, this is grimy. As I take a few first few hesitant steps into the building, the lights flicker on with a harsh buzz. Of course, I'm being such an idiot. There are automatic lights in here. They come on when people move. Totally ordinary. It's just that I've never been in this building before. It stands to reason I feel uneasily, unusually creepy to me, right? Especially if I think about why I'm currently here. This reminds me of, like, Cry of Fear. I don't know if you guys ever played that game. All that considered, it feels longer for me to reach the end of the long hallway than it probably should. I don't like that elevator. <laughs> It's a dangerous time to let your mind wander into places nobody sane would want to be wandering in. I just made that whole sentence up, I'm sorry. At least the building inside is noticeably warmer than the outside. It should be. It makes the whole situation slightly easier to bear. My hands and feet almost started to freeze off in the meantime. So, we walked an hour here, and then I spent close to, what, 11, 12 minutes outside? Yeah, no kidding. Nope. That's a no. I don't like elevators. This elevator reminds me of the movie um, Devil. I don't know if you guys ever seen that where the people get stuck in the elevator and it just there's calamity, but it's a good movie. The next thing I know, I stand before the elevator door, rooted to the ground, with a sudden sensation of someone walking. I don't like that music. That just sent a chill through my whole body. I am not. I press the elevator button. <laughs> Presently, I reach to press the elevator button, more panic exploding inside of me as the automatic light picks up that exact moment to cut out. Nope, 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 nope. My first instinct is to get out my phone, let it illuminate the sudden darkness of the corridor, and God knows what else is inhabiting it currently. Oh, there's nothing. 
Nothing that I'm able to see anyway. It's just the empty corridor, a row of closed doors along each side, seemingly the same as when I first entered it. There's nobody there. <sighs> I don't feel any less on edge when I turn back to the other direction, bearing my back to all that space again, pressing the elevator button as quickly as I can find it. I feel... This music makes me feel like someone's completely behind me, <laughs> like in my actual bedroom. A distant sound of machinery starting up pierces the unnerving silence, followed by a hum which indicates that the elevator is in motion. It's clearly on a different floor, so I wait for it to descend. I don't like elevators, they make me claustrophobic. If I have to run up the stairs to the 10th floor, I will. Taking a deep breath, I try to calm myself. Feels like an eternity for the thing to arrive. Okay. The doors finally slide apart with a slight scraping sound, and the small compartment finally opens up before me, completely empty. I'm not sure I'm not sure whether I should be surprised or not. A part of me hoped it wouldn't have to come to this, while already expected for things to turn out this way. You're braver than I am. I'd have ran home. At this point, I decide to do the only sensible thing I can think of doing. Get into the elevator, ascend to the highest floor, then make my way down the stairs all in the hope of stumbling upon Curran possibly hiding from me on one of the floors. Oh, boo, she ain't hiding. If only things turned out that easy. This was actually really interesting. I do like this demo. I've never really gotten into cat girls, so if you guys want me to, I will dive more into those stories just to kind of see. They are they seem interesting. I love the graphics and the art style of this. Storytelling was really cool. Sorry you guys had to listen to my voice for so long. <laughs> but if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave it in the comments down below. Do you want to see more of these type of games? When this actually comes to a full release, would you guys like to see this full release and see the actual full game? And if you're new to my channel and you just happen to drop by, welcome. Thank you for stopping by and for staying. Um, I hope you'll take a chance on me. Click that subscribe button and maybe hit the bell notification so when new videos come out. And if you are a returning sub, thank you so much for your support. It means everything to me, guys. I appreciate you and I love you. And on that note, as always, take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next videos. Bye.